Alrighty, welcome back to Let's Play Bioshock. So now we've made it to Neptune's Bounty, and we can see if we can help out this Atlas guy with his family issues. Okay, so right at the beginning of this level, uh, we have a vending machine here that can sell us some pistol rounds, armor piercing pistol rounds rather, and uh, some electric bugs. So we can stock up on those if we want to take on another big daddy soon, which I do. And it's also the first, uh, that was where I made my disturbing realization that there, the gene banks exist in the first time I made, played through the game, meaning that uh, we can't adjust our setup unless we approach one of these things. But um, me having played the game as many times as I have, I realized the, the, the necessity for these things, and it's just so you can, your character is more balanced, and it makes the, the therefore, the power is more balanced. So uh, that feature will be kept in Bioshock 2, and it doesn't bother me anymore. But anyway, um... It just bothered me because it made the boss against, uh, what's his name, Steinman a lot harder the first time I played the game before I had, uh, when I had Incinerate, so, uh, but now I know. Anyway, the first thing I want to do in this area is I want to hack this turret and then slowly get my way over to the turret on the opposite side here of this little thing of bobber This dried up port or whatever you want to call it. And there's a tonic sitting here in the middle of the dirt. It's a medical expert. We're going to be equipping that. And uh, I'll be buying some more slots for my tonics to be able to equip more very soon. But I'll go into more about that when we actually are able to. For now, I want to hack this other turret. And the reason I want to do this is because I want to set up an encounter with a big daddy here. Because uh, normally I don't want to fight him this early with this few resources. But I figured I really want to take this guy down now. Because uh, I really don't want every level in this game to be where... I go after all three of the big daddies at once at the end of the level, so I kind of want to deal with them along the way if I can. So I want to have the splicers start fighting this guy, and I want the turrets to start shooting him as well. And uh, I want him to be distracted with the turrets so I can deal as much damage to him as possible. Basically, I want everything with a gun in this entire area to be ganging up on him. And trust me, he can take it. He will freaking take it like a boss. And uh, we'll have to unload everything we've got on him. We're already out of armor-piercing pistol rounds, so that's... That's it for the pistol as far as its usefulness goes. Uh, we'll be getting armor piercing assault rounds as well. As well as, um. Uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, the electric bug is pretty much all we're gonna get as far as armor piercing with the shotgun goes. And it is uh, effective against big daddies, but it's not necessarily armor piercing. But the electric effect on it is much better, so, um. Regular shotgun shells are still pretty powerful, though, just because of, obsce uh, of how obscene this thing is. Anyway, there's a nitro splicer there, and uh, they do explain why the little sisters apparently are immune to mass explosions happening around them, but more on that when it's actually more relevant. They explain a lot of things that may seem very strange about this game. They also explain, in that, in that particular case, a lot of video gamey things you just kind of overlook. So dis despite how bizarre this game is, and trust me, it's weird, it does explain pretty much everything. It, doesn't, it just doesn't outright interrupt the game to show you the explanation, it lets you find it on your own. So if you really care about the story, you'll re listen to all the audio diaries thoroughly, and that's how you'll be able to tell what's happened and what's going to happen, and, you know, characters, personalities, and motivations, and the way the world works in Rapture, essentially. So, um, we've gotten that taken, they, we've gotten that taken care of. Sorry, it's like 12.30 and I'm dead tired, but I want to have this recorded. <laughs> um, normally I just kind of skip this little corner over here, because there's really nothing over here. But, um, yeah, the Nitro Slicers, they, um, I don't know if I mentioned this in the previous video when I mentioned how broken the telekinesis is, but in Bioshock 2, they do not, they got rid of the Nitro Slicers entirely and just made it to where the ability to throw a grenade is just part of the, the Leadhead Splicers AI script, which makes a lot more sense, which means you, that, uh, the ability to throw, to have a grenade thrown at you is unpredictable. Anyway, there's an RPG turret over there, but we want to hack that as soon as possible. But for the meantime, we have our first Gatter's Guard machine here. And we can now spend our atom on upgrades. And uh, obviously, I want to buy a plasmid slot and equip the, the incinerate. And there's also uh, the rage plasmid and the target dummy plasmid, as well as the winter blast. Those are new plasmids that are available. Uh, the target dummy, I don't like. I don't think it's very good. It has its uses, but um, 
The Winter Blast on the other hand is a very good plasmid, but I'll, and I'll explain what it does a little bit later. But um, we'll be getting a weapon in this game that um, makes the Winter Blast pretty much superfluous. We'll not be getting it, but Bioshock 2 on the other hand, it's very good. We'll be getting that as soon as possible in Bioshock 2. But um, there's two... Uh, there's a plasma and a tonic available to us here that I'm going to be picking up, at least at least one of them, the Sonic Boom plasma that I just got there, that are unique to uh, a certain downloadable package you could buy for this game called uh, the, um, I think it's called the Ryan Industries plasma package or whatever, and it gives us the Sonic Boom plasma. This is something I did not demonstrate in my original run through the game. So um, I figured I'd show it off now, and it basically is like an air attack, and it launches anything airborne, and it knocks guys over, and it's obscenely overpowered. And uh, it's actually a really good way, it's really, really, really powerful offensive plasma, it's a really good way of dealing damage to uh, enemies. So if you were upset with the concept of, oh, plasmids are not necessarily, you know, offensive attacks, they're not magic, so to speak, they're more so debuffs than anything else, well, the Sonic Boom is an exception to that. Anyway, we hacked that turret there, and I bought some more tonics as well. There's an, a, um, I wanted to get an armored shell, which reduces our physical damage that we take, and there's one that's uh, a static discharge, which whenever we get hit, um, you can see my setup there. Go watch that part of the video again. I'm kind of talking over it really fast to get a move on here, but uh, the static discharge is a very important uh, plasma because when you get hit by a melee attack, it'll release a static discharge, which will... Um, electrocute enemies around you. It could be, there's only one downside to it, and I'll get to that later. Nuts, I say. But if you head up to the Wolf Master's office and find old Peach a research camera, maybe I could manage an invite. What, what was that? Ah, uh, hell. My friend, you Okay, so we're forced into a fixed encounter here with a, uh, a spider splicer, it's a new enemy type, and uh, they are pretty much impossible to kill right now. They're very, very tough. But uh, the, the purpose of this next plot objective is to find a way that we can kill them like any normal splicer. And so basically you don't have to kill it because you're, you're probably incapable of doing so. So you're either just going to want to die or just hold out as long as you can until it finally decides to bugger off and go away. But um... They, uh, they have many attacks, they do backflips, they attach themselves to the ceiling, they throw their flaming hooks at you, which is their primary attack. So the splicers you see with the hooks are the uh, leadhead or not the leadhead, the, uh, the, what did I just say, spider splicers. So, um, they're the, the sort of signature splicers that you think about when you think about splicers. You think about, the, oh, they have hooks on their hands, and uh, that those are... The splash is that that's where that theme originates. It, uh, that's where that theme originates from, anyway. And we are just moving right along here. We already get a new weapon. I mean, we already hit, we're overwhelmed with the setup we already had. Now we get a brand new weapon, the grenade launcher. What does it do? It launches the grenades. It's very powerful, as you might expect. It has a ridiculous amount of splash damage, but it doesn't hold a lot of ammo. And uh, I will actually be using it quite a bit. I mean, I, I haven't. I often neglect to use the frag grenades. Blam! There we go. Triple kill. Kill all three of those guys in the water there. But, um... That actually wasn't that great of a demonstration because you didn't, couldn't see the explosion effect, but it still killed all three of those guys by throwing it in the water. And, uh, so that, it's, like I said, that's a, actually is a pretty good demonstration. I think about it getting three kills in one shot. No, no other weapon can do that at this point, so I suppose it's good for that reason. But, uh, that'll also be a really, that'll be our next best way of dealing damage to big daddies. But the best thing about the grenade launcher is not really the standard frag so much as it is the alternate ammo types. I'll be getting into that when we actually acquire some. Uh, for now, there's a little uh, keypad here. I want to see if I can get into. Might as well just auto hack it. There's an audio diary back here. Mr. Ryan like I said before, I want to get as many of those as I can. The hell? How did? How, what? Did he just get up through the floor there? Okay. Anyway, I was trying to let that audio diary go before I started talking again, but that was just too funny. Um, yeah. The, another thing about the Sonic Boom is, it, as I demonstrated there, is when you use it, 
it um any if an enemy collides with an object, it'll do further damage to it. So that guy hit his head on the back of the staircase there and did it even, it did even more damage. So uh, but while we were down there, we picked up an alternate ammo type for the third and final alternate ammo type for the shotgun, the exploding buck, which is pretty awesome, and I'll be showing that off much later. But um. Well, sometimes you will find big daddies that'll be wandering around without a little sister that they're protecting. Just ignore them. They're not really worth killing. I mean, you still get a lot of good loot if you want to kill them. You'll get a lot of money, but honestly, it's not really worth wasting the resources if you're not going to get a little sister. But those grenade boxes that the, um, now that we have the grenade launcher, those grenade boxes that the nitro splices drop may actually now contain grenades for a change. What a concept. Yeah, there's a demonstration of how obscenely powerful the sonic boom is as well. And, and the thing about the sonic boom is it only costs one atom, but because all uh, upgrades in this game cost increments of like 40 or more atom, you've basically made 40 atom useless by buying that. So you'll be able to get that and the um, you'll be able to get that and the machine buster without spending more than 40. But at the same time, it's like you have a 38 that you can't ever use again because it doesn't equal up to anything else you can buy. Anyway, there's an opportunity to get a sneak attack on these guys from here. They'll, they'll have a fixed spawn when you go over there to pick up that audio diary. Nope, oh, wrong one. The, the, another, down, another downside about the, um, the sonic boom. Oh, another thing about the telekinesis is you can pick up enemies' corpses and throw them at living enemies, which is really nice. I think in uh, Bioshock 2 there's an upgrade where you can pick up living enemies and toss them as they're still alive. But um, I'll talk more about that when we actually get to that game. For this one, though, um, that's actually really nice. That's something the gravity gun could not do in Half-Life 2 is pick up corpses. I mean, it could pick up live enemies when it was the dark matter gravity gun, but that was until the end of the game. So, um, uh, moving around along here, the, um, yeah, what I was saying about the sonic boom was it has the, your hand has the same animation when you're using the sonic boom as it does when you're using the telekinesis. So if you're just cycling through your plasmids, which is an easy mistake to make on the console version because you don't have them hotkeyed. Um, you may not see the the actual name of it there, and you might accidentally think you're holding one or the other. Uh, there's also a, a distinct sound effect, so you can tell by the sound effect, but it's still sort of a minor difference, and the sound effect is kind of quiet compared to the rest of the of the audio. So you might make this the mistake that you're holding one one plasma or the other. But thinking you're holding the telekinesis and you're really holding the sonic boom is not as bad as thinking you're holding the sonic boom and actually oh crap I just set a big daddy on fire. Sorry, I mean. I'm, how often do you set a guy on fire? I mean, happens every day to me. Anyway, we're just going to go ahead and take this guy down then, because he already has a little sister, so we might as well. But, um, that's a demonstration of the grenade launcher in more detail there. There's an alternate ammo type we picked up for it, which is the proximity mines. The, oh, by the way, this is a new type of Big Daddy. I did, I did mention it earlier when we fought the other one. It's called the Rosie, and it has ranged attacks. It has an extremely powerful rivet gun, and it throws. It can chuck proximity mines across the room, which is quite funny. But, um. It, um. The proximity mines that we use are essentially the exact same thing. So, uh, I think. Yeah, so. We went ahead and burned him to death, so that was pretty good. The proximity, I mean, you can still hit an enemy directly with a proximity mine, and it'll still do a lot of damage, probably as much as a frag, if not a little bit more. But really, those are good for times when you need to defend against oncoming enemies, and you want to lay a trap for them, essentially. And there will be times like that in the re at some point throughout the rest of the game, and uh, we'll be touching on that when it's more relevant. So. Oh, but um, another thing you might notice here is that um, we have reached our max capacity for money. We have a max max wallet capacity of $500, so we have to go ahead and spend that in order to hold more. <laughs> 